able to thank Dan and Lorraine and Rachel for their hard work in organizing this event and making it possible for us to gather today. And thank you, and very, very thank you for inviting me to, to this meeting. Uh, I have been teaching Canadian literature in Spain for about 20 years. And maybe I am the old case, but I did not have any effective relationship to Canada before I started. And not even in the first years, <laughs> but came with contact with Canadian people when I first came to Canada. So my app did not emerge from books or literature, but from meeting with people. I first benefited from the Government of Canada Grants Program in 1991 when I went to the University of Alberta to carry out research for one year towards the writing of my PhD thesis, which was defended at the University of Oviedo in northern Spain. That's where I came from. In Edmonton, I had the honor and the pleasure of meeting Professor Daniel Coleman and other brilliant and inspiring grad students and professors who continue to be a source of wisdom and inspiration for me. And that's where affect enters. From that moment, an intricate web of connections with other Canadianists uh, has kept expanding, thanks in part to the faculty enrichment programs of the International Canadian Council, and I must say, in a greater part, to funding from Spanish public institutions. And Anna has mentioned something. This informal network of connections has come to crystallize recently around the Canada and Beyond conferences and journal that Pilar uh, and I created some years ago. Focusing on issues of race, gender, sexuality, colonialism, neo imperialism, and globalization to investigate the strategies of dissent, resistance, and activism in contemporary culture in Canada. Among the Canadian visitors that I had the pleasure to host at the University of Vigo, and I mentioned in this because Vigo is not one of the big main universities in Spain, probably now you had heard of it before. <laughs> but uh, among the visitors who came are Erin Moure, the poet previously known as Erin Moore, uh, Jeff Dirksen, Smart Camorelli, Fred Juan, Pauline Batten, Larissa Nye, Hiro Mikoto, Lady Chariandi, Crystal Berkeley, Eleanor Ty, Harry Wiley, among many others. And I mentioned in them, yes, to um, contextualize the kind of criticism I'm interested in and the kind of people that uh, I established connections with within Can uh, Canadian studies. And also because many of these lectures are available on the internet, they were recorded, and you can just check them at the University of Vigo TV's website. So we are creating an archive of Canadian lectures as well. I'm particularly interested in trans-Canadian women authors' works, and I focus on fiction and the use of less privileged genres like the short story cycle, this was the topic of my doctoral thesis and my first book, and in recent years, a speculative fiction. I'm currently working on a group of authors that I study collectively, Hiromi Goto, Nana Hawkinson, Larissa Nai, and Suzette Mayer. <coughs> I think that the four of them, in diverse ways, participate in a common project that can be described as post-colonial, post-humanist, feminist, and I resist the post here in feminist, queer, anti-racist, and anti-imperialist. They also share common poetics and narrative strategies, although each of them draws on different cultural backgrounds and folklore for the creation of fantastic mutant characters, Japanese, Chinese, Black Caribbean, Western, and in all cases, the mixture of these the four authors coincide to imagine new figures of queer post-human hybridity embodied by those impure mythological or cyborgian shape shifters. In previous publications, I have contextualized the speculative fiction of this group 
as um, part of a more general critique of multiculturalism or official multiculturalism uh, in Canada, focusing on the mutants resistance to normative categorization. I've also written on the anti-capitalist vindication of cooperative affects in the dystopic urban novels of Larissa Light and Larry Hopkinson. In the new approach that I'm offering here for you to discuss in the seminar, I intend to put in relation the queer post-identities and affect modes represented in some of these narratives, the queerness of the speculative fiction as a genre, and the alleged queerness of the Canadian post-colonial nation. Uh, I'm sure we will discuss <laughs> those things. Okay? None of the political coordinates involved in my analysis, racism, capitalism, sexism, homophobia, none of them operates in isolation. And it is precisely the intersectional politics that these texts present which makes them so relevant, as I wish to demonstrate in the center, to contemporary theorizations of the queer post-human or post-human queer in Canada and beyond.